Some of the more jaw-dropping stats are going to include a 64% bonus to the attack speed, 56% critical strike chance boost, and finally a 50.7 spirit cost reduction, meaning that our tornado only costs 21 spirit. All right, hopefully this will be the run. I have actually just failed Lilith two times today. I did a few attempts yesterday, got Lilith to less than 10%, I believe three different times. Incredibly frustrating. Felt like I needed a little bit more damage, so I've come back after getting an upgrade. Let's see how we do. We have plenty of damage today. It's actually noticeably better than it was yesterday. And I know that my survivability is there. I actually have not lost any survivability for those increases in damage. I just got a pure upgrade, which is fantastic. That's the kinds we all hope for. Need to dodge that attack. I can actually die to that. Other than that, most of the mechanics here are pretty safe in phase one for this particular character build. And I'll leave a link for that build in the description of the video, as well as a guide for anybody who's unfamiliar with it. Now I'm gonna look to push this into phase two right here if possible and should get it so easy work there just absolutely noticing an increase in damage getting ready for phase two i'm just gonna essentially maul here this is just to build up buffs we're gonna get some mitigation buffs through aspect of might and also our key passive is gonna give us a large damage buff now i'm waiting for her to spawn here and then i'm gonna drop some tornadoes preemptively just to make sure i have maximum uptime now i notice when i position myself like this lilith will scoot to the right so you see that I also scoot into the right just before she does. And this is just to allow my tornadoes a little bit more uptime. So I'm dropping some more tornadoes here and I need to start moving for the orbs. Managed to dodge that first one. Really difficult to see that first one. Move out earlier if you're uncomfortable with that. And at this point we're just playing dodgeball. You can always use blood howl, blood howl excuse me, for a movement speed buff. It's a little bit safer than using the evade. Fortunately that last ball stopped before it hit me. Dodging orbs again. And very close to a stagger, dropping a tornado. And actually, my positioning was off. There's the stagger. Let's go ahead and try to burst her down if possible. And that means we'll just have to finish off with the mechanics. And then she'll go down basically in the next couple of hits. So dodge orbs. She's going to fly to one side. Here we want to be on the side that she flies to. Continue to dodge orbs. I'm now spamming my potion even if I'm at full health. All I need to do here is survive and get a teeny bit more damage onto her. A little tight there, but there we have it, finally. It makes all of those very close counters all the more worth it. Let's see what we get. That's it? Where's all the loot? I'll go ahead and hover over all the items just for a second, basically long enough so that you can pause the video and check out one of the items if you have a specific one in mind. But in general, they're all rank 12. We're of course armor capped. We're essentially resist cap, 0.1% off of three different resists. But other than that, they're all 70. And the items in general don't have perfect master working bonuses. But they've got decent ones. Anything that was absolutely horrible, I have re-rolled more than once, most likely. But in general, everything's pretty effective for the character. So you're going to really want a decent setup for this particular build. Now, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can check out the build, as well as a link to the video guide as well, if you're looking for how it synergizes and so forth. A couple other things to point out. As I mentioned, this build is essentially resist capped. We're point one off of three different resists. Going to be armor capped, over 60,000 life without an elixir of fortitude. Elixir Fortitude is going to boost this over 70,000 as well. Really useful if you want to use that for a boss swap. In this particular video, what I'm using when attacking Lilith is actually the Elixir of Advantage, giving you a further boost to attack speed and also Lucky Hit, which can proc more of those crowd control effects and essentially stagger the boss. Well-timed stagger is really important for taking Lilith down, in my opinion, at least with this build. One last thing I want to mention, just for people that follow the channel regularly, you'll notice that my attack power is substantially lower than the last video. That's because I have swapped to a different weapon. This staff that I'm running, which is still a staff, still think that's the weapon of choice for druids running tornado, now has resource cost reduction as opposed to plus damage. That's why you're seeing a large difference in attack power, but overall the damage output is actually better, especially when you get one that has multiple lines of that resource cost reduction rolled on the master working bonus. Everything else is exactly the same as I've been using the same build for a while now, and you can check that out in the link description as I mentioned. Remember there's a variant in there as well, so there's one that gives you better survivability for general farming and just farming comfortably as you'll have more health, and another version for maximum damage, which might help you get your first kills or even push higher, but you need to play a little bit safer as well. Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to jump into a tier 104, and I just failed one, and actually I left it early. I didn't even see it through to the end. Just really bad mob type, the spiders, almost unable to deal with them altogether. Tight spaces, nothing I wanted. So here we are, let's see if we get better luck. Using the same build, leave that in the video description for you as always. I'm gonna go ahead, this is a much better mob type. So I want more mob density than that. So I'm gonna kind of move up, just kind of getting comfortable here for a second. 
Using Maul, again, just to activate those buffs and so forth, the big advantage, wanna make sure that we're always maintaining those. Even this density is a little low. I think I can pull bigger packs than this, and that's really gonna help me get ahead on the timer. So here we go, gonna use a little bit of tornadoes here, just to get the damage resistance or mob down, and then I'm gonna kinda of continue to move on. Eventually we need to run into some elite packs here. Not a whole lot going on. It seems pretty safe at this point. I've got a couple of upgrades or a piece that's been upgraded a couple of times since the previous tier 103. And I think I should actually complete this with some time to spare. So again, some damage resistance auras. And now we'll go back and try to take this pack out. This pack should pretty much melt. This is a nice area for the tornadoes to kind of just swirl around and hit everything. Get out of there for real quick. And that's unfortunate. So that wall essentially just blocking my tornadoes off from the enemies, this is now gonna slow me down. And at this point, I kind of regret even stopping for these, but I am ahead of the timer, so damage output is good. Running Elixir of Holy Bolts. I will typically run this for all the trash and then swap on the boss. And good density here, this is great. So what I did was kind of tag all the mobs, keep those buffs up from Maul, and now I'm repositioning. And the mobs essentially are gonna use their abilities so you don't need to worry about them. And of course I go down, but what I'm looking to do is essentially get the mobs, at least the elite mobs, to use their abilities. So they're gonna essentially use them right off the bat. You can see some of those crystals going up and with the freezing aura. And then I'm gonna position my character rather than walking up to the mobs directly. And that should help you not only stay safer, but actually gives you better damage because after they cast their abilities, they're typically gonna to come towards you and walk into your tornadoes. Fortunately, the mistake I made the last time was I didn't land a crowd control proc from some of the tempering and I just lingered too long. I should reposition my character, either just moving it or using an evade. But regardless, my clear speed is pretty great right now. I'm really far ahead of the timer. Clear out the damage aura. This is pretty typical of what I will do with this build, clear those mobs. Just don't want them chasing after. Typically I'll clear those out and then try to get more. This open area is not fantastic kind of working my way into the tighter spot here. And here we get some more mobs. So again, I need to move, especially out of the obelisks and much better or safer spot here. And now I should be able to finish these off. Really easy work with these mobs. Health pool essentially not moving until now. And just one last reposition to finish them and we'll keep going. On to the next floor. Let's see if anything changes here. Got raiders. This is not terrible. It's a little bit scarier and more difficult to deal with per se because of the slams and some of the swings that the larger enemies will do. But I actually generally like the map. This map has a lot of tight spots that are great for tornado. So although the mob type might be a little bit worse overall, I actually prefer this. The last map has a lot of open spaces, which not only poor for tornadoes, but not as good for Holy Bolt Elixir either. Here we go. This, uh, I thought I grabbed that shrine, but apparently I did not. I think I'm okay. I'm not going to go back in for it. Just want to keep moving and get as far ahead of the timer as possible. Might seem crazy, but when every second counts as you're getting higher in these tiers and trying to clear, it's just wasted time. I arguably think that I should have enough time, but it's already slowed down considerably when entering this floor, which is kind of a surprise because as mentioned, I do actually prefer this map. Here we get a channeling shrine. This is great for this build as well. Of course, it's just gonna give us essentially infinite spirit and allow us to pop cooldowns. Blood Howl is just a tremendous heal. I love having a shorter cooldown on the Blood Howl. Repositioning a few times. The fiery mobs are really what scares me here. Could arguably skip this pack as well. Don't be afraid to do that. You know that in a rift like this, I've got plenty of enemies left in order to spawn the boss. So you can skip over a pack like that. The double fiery is pretty risky, especially since I intentionally didn't take that protection shrine. Well, I tried to take it, but didn't get it. However, when you get a pack like that, feel free to skip it and just move on, especially if you're that far ahead in the timer. Fiery mobs will essentially melt you or pretty much any melee build if they get on top of you. And we're very reliant on the crowd control effects from our tempering in order to lock enemies up and prevent things like that from occurring. So if you don't have any luck with that going off, then you're really vulnerable. Now this is bad again, there's a fiery mob. I'm just getting out in time. Still pretty nervous about this to tell you the truth, but getting close to spawning the boss, I'm gonna go in to finish them off. In general, I would say Fiery is the most difficult 
affix to deal with for this particular build as well. Just skip over the wall. And should have maybe one more good pack or one more good pull. And this, maybe this clump, maybe not. Just cleaning up whatever I can. I'm not even sure that's it. I should just move on. There we go. This will do it. So just make sure there's nothing deadly. Of course, another fiery. Just stay alive to that and I'm good or kill enough to spawn. There we are. So let's go in. I think I'm far enough ahead on the timer. I'm actually going to save the elixir swap. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to stay with the holy bolts. And this boss does summon some snakes, so I will get some benefit out of it. Elixir of fortitude is probably what I would swap to on this boss just to stay alive. Dodging what I can. Not so worried about the poison breath. Of course, don't want to take any damage I don't have to, but... Oh, wow, I'm really getting chunked by the spawn there. The echo. So let's get back in there. Maybe, I don't know, I think I'm still going to go with the holy bolts now that I'm aware of that. Should still beat the timer here. Actually didn't really keep an eye on how much damage I was dealing, to tell you the truth. I'm not sure what my pace was. Um, so ho hopefully I've got enough damage here. Get my buffs up, just play a little bit safer this time. Some more damage out. The green beams I'm not super concerned about. I have plenty of evade charges with the setup I run. I run extra evade charges on my boots. Again, getting chunked, and it looks like not quite sure. I think I evaded into one of the explosions. Or maybe the guy tagged me on my way out and I wasn't fully immune with the metamorphosis. So definitely need to change my strategy. Still at this point not going to burn an elixir. Seems kind of foolish at this point I guess. But I'm going to just play ultra conservative. Damage. I've gotten him maybe, I don't know, 5% there really quickly. So I think I can make this timer... See how I do. I had about five minutes when I started getting out. So I'm just going to avoid that guy. See you later. And now I'm going to go back in. I think I can burn this boss just fully avoiding the echo spawning. And yeah, this looks pretty good. Boss is staggered. I can get some damage. Let's see where I am. And just avoid the explosion. So about 25% and a little over, a little under a minute, I should say. So I can definitely make this timer. It might be tight. If I die again, it will be over, but that is kind of on me for not using the swap. I'm not even sure if I would have survived either time with the extra health, but certainly a damage elixir would be more beneficial. But as I mentioned, this boss does spawn some snakes, so these adds will still add some damage from the current elixir I have. Back in. At this point, just avoiding poison pools, puddles. Not a huge fan of that spot. Tough to see. Gonna move my character just in case there's anything under me. And getting back out again. So this is my strategy. Almost 50% and under two minutes so far DPS uptime. I got three minutes left. So I, I can make this pace. Get out again. Be nice to actually damage the boss. And basically just using a rotation. As many tornadoes as I can, keeping Maul. Or keeping werebear form for two seconds every 15 seconds. I actually seem like I do it more often than that. Use the ravens as well as using blood howl just for the buffs. That would kill me, so fortunately I get out of that. Get back in with another stagger. Not only do I survive, but I'm gonna get a big chunk of damage on the boss here. Things are looking very positive at this point. And continuing to get damage. That was great. And back out so just kind of rinse and repeat at this point just don't do anything foolish I guess just don't risk anything plenty of time I'm actually my time is situation is getting better again I want to get out for that that will kill me and plenty of room on this map to just escape to a side that got a little scary for some reason when I was evading it would not evade if I was caught on something, sometimes metamorphosis, excuse me, can be a little clunky and get caught on objects. So two minutes remaining, plenty of time. Stunned there, I want to get out and held up even after I evaded. Somehow I didn't take full advantage of that unstoppable. Weird things happening here, but 
and get out to be safe. Trouble seeing. Actually, I think I can get back in. All right, out again for that. Plenty of time, I just need some patience here. Okay, <laughs> just running around aimlessly. And can I hit the boss? There we go. Is it enough? Not quite. And maybe, finally, there we go, 104. So not so bad. In fact, most of the issues here were of my own fault. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.